My name's Jennifer Cornbleed. I live in Chicago, and I'm the author of this book, Raw Food Made Easy for One or Two People. And the reason I really love raw food is everyone knows we need to eat more fruits and vegetables, and especially everyone here, this is why you're, you're here this weekend, knows that we should be eating more fruits and vegetables. And raw food is just, raw food dishes are a great way to do that creatively, and you preserve the maximum nutrition in these foods when you just eat them fresh as they are. You can save time when you don't cook, and you can also just create some of the most delicious dishes ever. And it doesn't need to be complicated or difficult. The reason I wrote this book is that after I'd been teaching raw food classes for a couple of years, I really got so much feedback from my students that we need it to be easier if we're going to do this on a daily basis. There's a lot of raw food uh, recipe books out there that they've got dehydrating and sprouting and fermenting and, and things that are not quick and easy. So my goal in this book was to make everything take less than 30 minutes from start to finish, no fancy ingredients, no fancy equipment. The only equipment you need to make anything in my book is a blender, a food processor, a knife, and a cutting board. And you can do absolutely everything with that. And your book. Yes, and my book. <laughs> <laughs> and so today I'm going to make you a raw food entree or main dish. And a lot of times people think raw food might mean just carrot sticks or celery. No, not you know, not a carrot salad like this, that'd be great, but just, you know, carrot sticks or celery or whatever, something really simple. How can you make a main comforting dish out of it? Well, there's a lot you can do. Uh, you can stack stuff and roll things into all different kinds of intricate shapes just using very simple ingredients. Uh, but another thing you can do is make raw pasta, and that's what I'm going to do today. And pasta is everyone's favorite comfort food. But a lot of people are trying to avoid it these days because you're trying to get away from the white flour, and even if it's whole grain, maybe it's you know, a little too much starch or whatever. Well, there is a very low carbohydrate option uh, you know, in terms of starchy, grainy carbohydrates that you can do in faster, faster than you can boil water. And so that's what we're going to do today. And usually when people like pasta, what they really like is the al dente texture and the taste of the sauce. It's not like wheat pasta really has that much taste on its own. It's the al dente texture and the sauce that people like. Well, you can recreate that. I'm going to be using zucchini uh, to make this noodle here. And zucchini is a bland enough vegetable and a soft enough vegetable that if you cut it the right way, it's going to have an al dente texture. And it's going to absorb the flavor of whatever sauce that you put it with. So there are two easy ways to make zucchini noodles. The absolute simplest, most low-tech way is just to use a vegetable peeler. And I'm starting with a peeled zucchini so that it's going to look more like a traditional white pasta, but you don't have to peel it if you don't mind it being green. And I'm just going to continue peeling the zucchini into ribbons on all sides until I reach the core. And then you could save the core for a cream of zucchini soup or something like that uh, where the seeds don't matter. But in this particular dish, I'm not using the seeds just for appearance. So I'm just peeling on all sides until I reach the core. And what you'll find is that after just one or two zucchini, you're going to have enough zucchini fettuccine. Everyone see that? It's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> and when you get one or two of them, I just did a couple strips there, it really looks like fettuccine. And once you toss it with that sauce, it softens its fettuccine. So that's the easiest, most low-tech uh, way to do it there. If you want to get a little bit fancier with a different shape, uh, this is a gadget called a vegetable spiral slicer. And this will make angel hair pasta for you. So let me just show you how to do that. This is a very inexpensive tool. It's like $20. But if you don't want to do that, just stick with the vegetable peeler method. So I've just cut the zucchini in half so it'll fit in here. And I just, there's a little spike there. I'm putting it on the spike, putting the top on. And I'm just going to turn this handle. And you'll see in a moment, it's going to come out like angel hair pasta. Oh, I'll hold that, that up for you in a minute. And this is quicker than boiling water, isn't it? People think of pasta as being a fast entree. Well, it's faster to do it like this little pa pasta machine here, homemade pasta in just a minute. That's just half a zucchini. About one or two zucchini would be enough for one person. And you've got angel hair pasta. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> OK, so there's our noodles. Really quick, really easy. You can use other vegetables if you want, carrots, beets, daikon, radish. I like the way zucchini tastes a lot, though. And now we're going to move on to the quickest marinara sauce ever, tomato sauce. And I'm going to be using a food processor to make the sauce because I like it a little chunky, but you could also use a blender um, if you like a bit of a smoother sauce. And we're going to do this all in one bowl. I'm going to put everything in this food processor, and then when we come back around to me, I'll process it in one second, and it'll just be done. So I'm going to start with a couple of uh, fresh tomatoes. 
And this is a handy little gadget called a tomato shark, where you can just get that nub out there. But of course, you could just use a little knife. And for this particular recipe, the seeds are going to be just fine in here because it's all blended. Sometimes for salads, I remove the seeds if I don't want that texture, but it's, it's going to be just fine for this recipe. So we're going to put a couple of tomatoes right into the food processor. You don't need an expensive food processor. This is a Hamilton Beach that cost me about $30 at Target just because I, didn't want to, I don't want to travel with anything expensive and in case it breaks. So you can really get started with raw foods for under $100 in terms of your equipment. Just an inexpensive blender, food processor, knife, and a cutting board. Uh, Jennifer, right. are you, yes. um, a to do you eat a totally raw food diet? Do I eat a totally raw food diet? Not 100% because I don't like to be really strict about anything, and I certainly want to try all the dishes that all of you are <laughs> making today. But I do eat you know, about 80 90% raw, as much as I can at home, but I like to be social and you know, try different things. But yes, I do eat mostly raw foods, and it certainly makes it easy when I'm traveling like I am now because I can just do any of this in a hotel room, you know, just really easily. Okay, so we've got a tomato there. Now I'm going to add a red bell pepper, and that's going to add a little bit of sweetness to this dish, and it's also going to highlight the intense red color. So go ahead and do that. Since it's all going in the food processor, this does not need to be chopped you know, perfectly or anything like that, just chunks that are all about the same size. I am going to remove the seeds from this red bell pepper. I'm just slicing down the side, going around the seed bed. Get that out. Okay. And then we'll just cut that into chunks. And that's going to go in there. Secret ingredient here is some sun-dried tomatoes. Mm. And this is what's going to make it thick, like a cooked tomato sauce. And it's also going to give that, that intense tomatoey flavor a little bit of sweetness. So these are sun-dried tomatoes that I've soaked in water for a couple of hours just to soften them up. Um, so this is going to be actually a fat-free marinara sauce. Uh, the recipe in my book, Raw Food Made Easy, has about a tablespoon of olive oil. If you don't mind adding a little oil, that will make it richer and creamier. But you can leave the oil out. So I'm not using oil pack sun-dried tomatoes, which is another option if you don't care about the oil, but to keep this uh, fat free, I'm just using soaked sun-dried tomatoes. We're gonna add some of those. Not too much of the water uh, in there because I don't want this sauce to get soggy or anything. Okay, and then we're just gonna add our seasonings and that's gonna be it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of crushed garlic, just used a garlic press there to crush a couple cloves of garlic. Um, a little bit of basil and oregano. Of course, if you have fresh herbs, that's wonderful, but I don't want people to feel like you have to have fresh herbs on hand to make this recipe. It's going to be great with dried. I like it spicy, so I'm going to add just a dash of cayenne pepper mm. and also black pepper. And that's going to be it. Oh, and a, just a little bit of sea salt, and that's optional if you're trying to avoid salt, but I will just add a little bit of sea salt there. And then when we come back to me, I'll process that and we'll have some zucchini noodles with marinara sauce.